Welcome to Public House, intimate conversations with people making a difference in the Hudson Valley. And now, from Paula's Public House in Poughkeepsie, New York, here's Paula Young. Hi, welcome to Public House. I am Paula Young, and I am so pleased today to have a very interesting guest. Denise Van Buren, very good name, who happens to be the head of the Daughters of the American Revolution, also known as DAR. Welcome. Well, I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Thank you so much. So you are the head of an organization that's been around since 1890, 30 years before women were allowed to vote. Right. As I understand it, were four women who basically said, why don't we get to do anything? We're as important as the men. And they got together and they created this organization to represent their version of patriotism, to support the America they believed in, and that has segued till today. And now you, so tell me a little yeah. bit more. So uh, that is exactly right. We grow out of the colonial revival movement. After the country is 100 years old in 1876, a lot of Americans begin to take stock of what we have in common. They had come out of a very divisive Civil War period, and they find in the American Revolution the perfect example of the fact that there is more that unites us than separates us as a country. So organizations- Which is still true today. Absolutely <laughs> true today, right? That's why we are so passionate about our country. Uh, the Sons of the American Revolution forms first, um, decides, opts not to uh, welcome women into its ranks. And so as you mentioned, in Washington, D.C., four women gather and decide that there should in fact be a national society of the daughters of the American Revolution. We are based in Washington, D.C. We own what is believed to be the most valuable piece of real estate owned by women anywhere in the world. We own an entire city block in Washington, D.C., a museum and library on one end, a 4,000-seat auditorium on the other with an administration wing in between. That's where we're based. But the truth is, the heart of DAR beats all across the country and, in fact, in foreign countries where we're located. We have uh, nearly 3,000 chapters and approximately 185,000 vibrant patriotic members. Right. I, actually, I read today that it was 198,000, so I thought, that's a big number, and you are everywhere all over the world. Well, when I was, I came to the United States at the age of five. My mother had married an American named James Young, whose family are Mayflower descendants. Okay. And as it happens, I'm in the local shopping mall in Sharpstown, Houston, Texas, in 1975, and there they are, the DAR. And we got to chatting, and like, well, you, you need to join, girl. You're a member. You're a <laughs> so I became a DAR and did a little bit and then came to New York and kind of let life get away from me. Sure. But you do a lot. What's interesting is America is the founders and then all the layers of everybody who's ever become an American That's citizen. That's exactly right. And you guys support immigrants once they become citizens. You pass out constitutions. You are there when they say their first pledge. It's very kind of, um, I'm very emotional over things I believe in. I believe in America. Having been uh, given the opportunity to be here. Well, and I think, you know, your passion speaks volumes about the DAR and the way we feel about our country and our neighbors. Um, most people are surprised to find out that we're so much more than just a lineal society. Right. To join, of course, you have to be descended from someone who aided in the cause of American independence at, during the American Revolution. But beyond that, once you join, we are primarily a service organization. We have more than 40 active committees. Uh, you mentioned some of the things we do. We, we tutor um, s folks who, for whom English is a second language. We welcome new citizens. We have a very active conservation committee that encourages waterway cleanups and other environmental projects. We have a flag of the United States of America committee, and we have a very vibrant commitment to both our active duty military and our veterans. So we have DAR Project Patriot, which, for example, just adopted uh, the USS uh, Dwight Eisenhower ship, and we uh, supplied them with all sorts of packages and care items at their request. On the veteran side, we're among the largest volunteers at VA medical centers nationwide. So what and we your feel- your volunteer work is to basically support, support emotionally support, committees. talk to people. That's, That's what you do with veterans, veterans, as well as provide perhaps meals That's and right. some financial supports, right? That's right, yeah. We, we have something for everyone in today's DAR. We have all of these vibrant opportunities to be able to serve your, your country. And 
I encourage people to do their family history. Once you find out, as you knew already, but as others find out and they do their genealogy, all of American history comes to life for you and you feel so much um, pride in citizenship. Every generation that has arrived at our shores, we really are a melting pot, right? Yes. Although although we have this connection to the, the founders of the country, we celebrate the fact that America is so diverse and is so rich in her diversity. What we consider ours is a joyful obligation to make sure that the citizens of today understand what the founders intended for our country, from the Declaration of Independence onto the United States Constitution, what it means truly to stand up and say, I am an American. Exactly. exactly. Now, what do they say? To whom much is given, much is expected. Americans, especially I think the newer generation, has been a bit complacent and has sort of laid back and let all the wonders of being an American, you know, just swath all over them without them taking an active role. Young people who join the military know firsthand what that means. But what I notice is a lot of young Americans have never read the Constitution. It's like in our house, we played history of the world with my son, so he was very knowledgeable, as was his dad. But I don't notice that. I ask people, name the 50 states, name the 50 capitals. Not everyone can. And it's unfortunate, and it needs to change. Especially now this year with this particular election, more Americans were engaged. Younger Americans were engaged. People who had never voted, voted. And no matter what the outcome, the point is that we're getting people more interested in being part of our world. Well, part of what astounds me about DAR and its founding, which we talked about in 1890, is they then set down uh, three objectives, historic preservation, education, and patriotism. They were at that time dealing with a lot of waves of immigration coming into the country. They wanted to make sure all of these new Americans understood what it meant to be an American. What astounds me is that 130 years later, those purposes are just as relevant exactly. as they were a, a century ago. Uh, we're still grappling, if you will, with the same issues of trying to make people understand that being an American comes with rights and responsibilities. Exactly. And, and that's really what a lot of DAR's missionary so work is about. America is actually a concept. It, it was an experiment that has continued because of the extraordinarily complicated and complex structure. And a lot of it is dependent on everyone playing by the rules, everyone understanding that united we stand. So today, women's work, a lot of women have given up the, what was considered women's work in the 1850s, in the 1890s, in the 1900s, to work in jobs. And now more people are staying home with their children. During this pandemic, I'm finding my women friends are picking up gardening, sewing, mm. candle making things that the womenly arts would have all basically disappeared. So to women who do not necessarily know what they can do, tell me about how they can find you. Well, easily to do that and just go to www.dar.org. Um, here locally within Dutchess County, we have three chapters right in Dutchess and Southern Mid and Northern Dutchess. You can find them through that national website. And, and you know, I like to tell people, commenting on your, your part about sewing and, and, and discovering other arts, that, as I said, we offer something for everyone, but we will give together about 10 million hours of service in my three-year administration as President General. Right, I saw that, and creating a, things. Yeah, a big part of it has been, for example, masks, especially in the early mm -hmm. days of the pandemic when they were not available. Mm -hmm. Our members have sewn and donated about 800,000 pieces of personal protective equipment for their neighbors, 800,000, 800, doing, yep. doing it from home sewing machines, doing it on a voluntary basis. I'm so proud of that, but it really reflects what it means to be a member of our organization. We give back. Uh, we, we feel this need to celebrate who we are as a people and a country and to be positive. We're non-political, we're non-partisan. We are just here to celebrate exactly. America and to raise awareness among the people who live here what it means to be an American citizen. And to a young, um, perhaps the daughter of uh, Mexican immigrants or a young African-American woman who says, well, I don't think I date back to one of the founders but I'm still an American, who cares? Oftentimes I meet people, especially everyone is on you know, Ancestry.com, they're on their home computers now and they're enjoying their own genealogy search. You do actually have to find someone who participated in the American Revolution in order to join DAR. Which is maybe why the number's not so big in terms of membership. 
Well, uh, so do you have like an we're, we're one of the largest. Number? No, we're one of the largest women's service organizations in the country. Wait, it, it's that, that yeah. 180, 198,000. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just thinking, so how does a woman who still wants to join but may, may not have, is there a, another, another opportunity for her to become a part of? Certainly if she contacted her local chapter, found out what their activities were, and said that she wanted to volunteer, uh, that I'm sure the ladies would be uh, grateful to have her, her involvement. Um, but as far as being an actual member, you do need to document your genealogy in order to join us. And what I am finding is that there is a strong interest with young people. We offer you a platform to serve as a citizen that unless you join the military, I'm, a, I'm the first Blue Star mother to be President General of the National Society of the Day or of a son in the military. Thank you. I, I could not, I did not join the, the armed forces. Um, and here's an opportunity as an American though, as a citizen, that I can give back to my country. And that's what young women in particular are coming to us and saying that's what they want to be able to do and that's the platform we provide. I think that's, that seems to be a thread is what I'm hearing. You know, it's not, it's okay to protest and that has been age for, since the beginning of time, I'm sure people have protested to speech. get what they, they want, want to change things. But destroying is one thing creating is harder it's a lot harder to build than it is to, to burn so i think that young people are looking for opportunities in which they can join to build and you know everybody has varied interests we for example give out uh, more than a million dollars in in scholarships mm -hmm. annually to to help students the best and the brightest students in america be able to further their educations we uh, as i said support active duty military but we also support our veterans we try to find ways to model the best behavior of citizens so the that others, even if they can't yes. join, they are inspired by what we do. I think it's fascinating. I think it's historical, which I adore. And I think it's, it's extremely cogent to the era that we live in. And as you say, that thread has run through. You know, now I just wanted to ask one quick thing. Sure. Did the DAR have some fingers in the suffragette movement? We did. Uh, for example, Susan B. Anthony was a member of our Arondacoy chapter in Rochester, New York. Alice Paul was a member okay. of the DAR. Even then, we were non-political and non-partisan. We never took a formal organizational stance on suffrage, but many of our active early members were at the same time suffragettes. Yeah, because you were smart. Those four women were smart women with a mission and smart women with an opinion. And I, being a smart woman and talking to a smart <laughs> woman with an opinion, I think that it needs to be a lot more light shown on women who do good things. And I will say, as far as our four founders go, uh, two were from the North, two were from the South. Again, they're trying to find something that will unite country women together on a mission. Um, but the other interesting thing to me is that in 1890, all four of them were working women. Look at that. That all is four of so them. cool. This is great, and I, I admire what you do. I, I take it personally. Maybe I will find out where my DAR membership card is and come and join the local branch. That would Thank be great. you so much. And I'm sure we'll, if you have any events, please let us know. Okay. Marvelous. That sounds Thank great, you. Paul. And thanks for this opportunity to talk about a wonderful organization. I'm grateful. And it really is one. Folks, this has been very edifying and interesting. I know there's a lot of you out there who might have piqued their interest. And so contact your local DAR. Be proud to be an American. Thank you. That was great. That says it all. Hi, I'm Paula Young, and I'm the proprietor here of Paula's Public House. Do join me for good food, good cheer, and good fellowship. We are here, we have fun, and we'd love to have you be a part of it. Come on down.